Well, welcome everybody. Uh, this is Zarathustra broadcasting live from Tulum, Mexico. And um, one more time, we're able to do the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. And uh, somehow magically, it keeps happening. And, um, and we get to be together. The technology is allowing it for us to be together. And uh, nothing very drastic or major has happened that would cut our connection. So um, we're here now. We'll see how long this is going to last. But for the moment, which is the only thing we have in our lives, this moment, we're together and I appreciate it. And it's like diving into this love affair and this connection in this moment without any kind of stories, uh, without the past or the future, or where is this going to go or what's going to happen. Right now, he, in, in this moment, we're together. And when we're together and we're available to this moment, Existence reveals the magic of the moment. And being in the moment in here and now not necessarily means that it's all going to be like peaches and cream. I mean, you may be in pain or you may have gotten some bad news or whatever, but you're here. So when people say be here now and be in the moment, that doesn't mean like you don't have any problems in your life, but you're able to merge your mind into the presence and the power of this moment and be able to absorb what's available, whatever is the message and communicate in this moment. So this is what's happening right now. And uh, hopefully we're all on the same page. We're gonna do a meditation as always. So just relax, take a deep breath and sort of bring your attention inwards, turn your mind, turn the way you're looking at things that you're looking at outside you're observing the objects, whether you're observing your mind, which is objects, or your emotions, or your body, or you're looking at the screen and you're looking at me. These are all objects. So I want you to divert your attention inwards. And instead of looking at something outside of yourself, I want you to bring your attention inwards towards the one who's looking, who is looking at the screen right now. You're looking at your computer screen and you're watching me. Who is watching me? I want you to bring your attention towards the one who's watching me and see what happens. It's not a mind exercise, so you don't have to think. Simply turn your attention inwards and look for the watcher and see what happens. And relax, take a deep breath. And don't try to meditate. Allow meditation to happen on its own accord. Without even trying, just simply allow things to happen rather than try. 
trying to make it happen.
Yeah, just relax in this energy. Allow this energy to shower you. Slowly, slowly come back. Ah. 
All right. So the topic of today is going to be the one. And when I'm talking about the one is that um, I'm talking about relationships. And um, there are people coming to me asking me about their twin flames or uh, soulmate and uh, oh, th or he's the one or she's the one and I found the one and and da -dee 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 -dee. And, um, and it's, you know, it, it's a very interesting um, topic because uh, somehow we're all one way or the other at one point in our lives um, have a strong desire to find our soulmate. And, um, and we're looking for the one. And also, the uh, entertainment industry like Hollywood and all these movies, there's millions of movies been made uh, all over the world from the time that the industry started it about love affairs and finding the one. And uh, you can see it like um, a lot of, a lot of times, like French movies, you can see older French movies, like, and uh, it's in Second World War or during the uh, time of, of uh, maybe older than that. And they can come together, the two. And uh, finally, the guy or the girl jumps off the bridge into the river and commits suicide or all kinds of stories like that. Or a lot of the movies that you're seeing that you finally connect with um, the one, and then there's a happy ending, and and the movie. So everybody wants a happy ending somehow that the lover, the two lovers, come together and and uh, they're happy thereafter, and and it's a wonderful fairy tale. It's it's fantastic, and I love it. The unfortunately, it's just doesn't really happen. Or if it does happen in real life, it won't last very long. And, you know, maybe sometimes here and there, one or two people, they connected with the one and they end up being together all of, our, all of their lives. Mostly you see that in older generations. But I don't see that in newer generations anymore uh, because everything is fast paced and everything is drive through, you know? Like if you live in America, people want to go drive through. Drive through, I mean, you want to go to Burger King and you want to drive and pick up your food. You don't want to get out of the car. Uh, you want to go to Starbucks or McDonald's or Pizza Hut. It's all drive through. And the same thing with relationships, marriages, they're all drive through these days. Everything is fast. It comes together and then it falls apart. And we want instant gratification. And if we can't get it instantly, then we have no patience and we want to go. And, you know, all these movies or stories that you've seen that uh, something happened to the husband and he gets a disease or, or is sick or is disabled and the wife or the woman stays, stays there for 15 years and finally after 15 years, he comes back and... Uh, he comes back to health or he comes out of the coma or whatever, and they get together. But that's not happening anymore. It's basically non-existing. And, uh, but let's look at this thing about the fairy tale of Hollywood and the Cinderella story that <clears throat> 
you meet your match and you finally get together and you go through a lot of hardship and a lot of uh, challenges and, uh, and you know, you really strive and you go through this and that and finally you come together and the idea is you're going to be happy thereafter. Okay? First of all, this is coming from a very early conditioning from childhood in regards to love, human love. Okay? And it's a complete illusion. It doesn't even exist. That's the interesting part of it, is that it's funny, like all these years go by and barely not many people have caught up with it or catch it and say, wait a minute, this is bullshit. You, you guys are selling us and brainwashing us on something that doesn't exist. Something that doesn't exist. We've been fed that all of our lives. It simply doesn't exist. And I'm going to tell you what. From early childhood, when you're born, and, and what happens is you have to, this thing that, okay, I love my child unconditionally, or I love my baby, or I love my, my children, this unconditionally, it's not real. There is a condition in human love. I don't care what relationship you have. Human love is conditional. It's not unconditional. There's a condition to it. The only, there's two things that's very, very, one thing is very, very close to an unconditional love and that's for the mother and the child. And that's even up to a certain age. And then it changes. So maybe in the very beginning or the first four, five, eight, and 10 years, it's unconditional. The love of the mother for the child. But then there is conditions coming. And definitely between the lovers, a couple, a man and a woman, or whether you're, it's man and man or whatever it is, woman and woman, it doesn't matter. But I just going to make it very simple because traditionally it's a man and a woman. Okay. So if, you know, if you um, have an issue with that, uh, just take this and accept this for now. And that's, between lovers, that's absolutely conditional. There's no such a thing as, oh, I love my partner unconditionally. It's bullshit. Because the moment your partner doesn't do what you want her to do, then all hell will break loose. So, and I don't buy that for a second. I've never seen that happen because it's all conditional. But what happens? basically is when we're kids, you basically are being programmed and the parents don't even know it because this is like a, not even nations, it's just basically the, the deal which is happening ever since the ever since is that, you know, when your child does something that you like, like kid comes home or dad comes home from work and dad's saying, oh, how's Johnny? And mom says, oh, he's been such a good boy. Um, we, uh, we learn how to count from one to 10. Uh, Johnny ate all his vitamins and he ate his um, spaghetti and uh, Dad says, oh, my God, this is my boy, and I love you, and hugs the baby and kisses the baby. So slowly, slowly, when this story is happening over and over again, which is happening almost every day, is that the baby starts getting, the child is starting to get programmed 
that I need to do something good in order to get the love of my parents. Because let's face it, you left your seven-year-old and 13-year-old at home, and you, you know, finally you don't consider you're a single mom, and finally you went, you went out and uh, one night to have fun with your girlfriends, and you come back home, and the two kids, they've been eating spaghetti or pizza or whatever, and they threw ketchup all over the place. And you enter, and you come home, and you see ketchup all over the place, on the walls, on the couch. What are you going to do? You're definitely, they're going to get a spanking from you, for sure. Whether you physically spank them, or um, they're going to be punished. So there's going to be a negative reward. It's not going to be a positive reward. Uh, so this is the programming. So you did something wrong, and now I don't love you, and I'm going to punish you. And when you do something I want you to do, like you did all your homework and everything, I put you on my lap, and and I, you know, I pull your cheek or kiss you or hug you. So it's a conditioning that we all have gone through and it's still happening. Constant conditioning. Then you're watching the movies. Like you're watching the movie like in America and the football player throws the last ball and they touch down and uh, they win. And, and the quarterback, he's going to get the trophy girl. Because they won, he's going to get the, the hottest girl in school. So it's like you have to do something in order to get something back. So it's all objects. Is this making sense so far? Are you guys with me? Ula, wake up. <laughs> so you have to do something in order to get love, to get approval, to get acceptance from your parents. Then you go to school and the same thing. You have to do something positive for your teacher to acknowledge you and to love you and to like you and the school too. Then you go to college or to the army and you have to, you know, go kill a lot of people in order for the army or the country to give you a medal, to approve you. So it's conditional. So we're all been conditioned from childhood. So love is something that comes from the outside. And then you're watching millions of different, I don't know if you ever watch Bollywood in India, Bollywood movies, uh, especially uh, Middle East, uh, South America, uh, maybe Asia, Asia. Uh, a lot of, it's very dramatic. There's a lot of the movies about love affairs, but it's very dramatic. And it keeps repeating, it's the same shit. Like nothing evolves in it. You're watching the same story. Nothing has changed. Very dramatic, a lot of jealousy, you know, revenge, da 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 da. And even now, I mean, you're watching a lot of the movies in the Western world when it comes into the love affairs. It's the same, same thing. It's the same script that keeps repeating itself. And I mean, at what point do you want to get it? What point is going to come to this, say, like, you know what? Enough is enough. I don't want to watch this shit anymore because it's garbage. And then all these songs that you're hearing about, you know, the one or 
uh, there's millions of the songs like I've been looking for her all my life and without her I can't live and my life is going to be destroyed if I'm not with her, if I lose her. All these projections that if my partner leaves me, I'm going to be destroyed. I'm going to be ruined. Without my partner, I can't live life anymore. And then all these promises that we give to each other that baby, I'm going to be with you for the rest of my life. Sweetie, <clears throat> you're the only one. And you know, in a moment, excuse me, <clears throat> in the moment <laughs> when you're promising it in a moment, a lot of times, I mean, people mean it in a moment, but then it changes. How many times in your life you have met a man or a woman that you thought this is the one? And six months after, a year after, five years, 10 years after, you can't stand them anymore. I mean, this is the same person that if you're talking, having dinner together and he did this, he touches ear, you wouldn't mind. If he uh, eating the food and he's talking a little bit and he's got a little bit of food in his mouth, you didn't mind. If you're talking to somebody and he interrupted you, you wouldn't mind it. And everything was cute and pretty about him. And now it's the same guy with the same way of being and every single thing he does, it bugs the shit out of you. How many times that has happened in your life? How many times people have gone to the beach and they had a second ceremony, marriage ceremony, or the first or third or whatever? It is the full moon. All the stars are, the entire Milky Way is aligned. And or there is a planetary alignment after 26,000 years. And on the full moon, on that particular time, you're getting married on the beach and you're wearing white and you're putting all these beautiful flowers around you and jewelry and all of your friends are around and everyone's playing music. And this is like divine planning that you're marrying in this particular moment. This is forever. And that your child is definitely going to be a, a baby Jesus or baby Krishna. And then two years from that point, you're hating each other. You can't stand it. How many times that has happened? How many people you've seen this has happened to them? So what happens to the one? I mean, I thought you met the one. The one means that this is the person you're going to be with for the rest of your life. Your vibrational notes your, are absolutely equal to each other. They're completely matching. This is the person that went through the eons of time and finally somehow through millions of years, you happen to meet each other here and now, and you come together and this is it. And then what happens? So, the, the reason it doesn't work and, and it cannot last forever. Again, you know, there is like exceptions of some people you meet that, okay, they've been together all of their lives but it gets less and less and less. There's always an exception to the rule. Okay? So, but what about 99% of the humanity that doesn't experience that? And that's not the reality. And the part that I say that it's not real, it's illusion, 
is because true love, love is not something comes from the outside. It's not an object. I mean, I can be loving to my partner, to my parents, to my friends, to people and give love. Being very kind, very loving, like Mother Teresa. But it's still for the person who's receiving it, the recipient, they have to fill it within themselves. It doesn't matter how much love you get from the outside world. If you have not discovered that within yourself and you don't feel it and you're not experiencing it, then it doesn't matter how much love you get from your partner. I met so many people, like I'm talking to them. I say, well, what happened? Why did your relationship end? I thought you were really into each other. And they tell me, well, because she came to me and she was telling me, I need to go deeper. We need, we need to go deeper. Deeper? Yeah. I'm not, she told me like, I'm not loving her enough. I got to go deeper. I heard this story so many times. And of course, I mean, how deep can you go? So, and then it ended because it wasn't enough because she wasn't feeling the love within herself. So it doesn't matter how much the guy is going to give her love. If you're not feeling it and you haven't discovered that within yourself, it doesn't matter how many people loving you, your mom, your dad, your kids, your family, your fans. You feel empty and you feel not wanted. So what do we do now in the Western world is we're going to change the outside. So I'm going to get a nose job. I'm going to just get some lip job. You know, I may get a boob job. So I like... My First, I'm going to project it on myself that I don't like my body. Okay, I'm too big. I'm too small. I'm flat chested. So I'm going to get some plastic surgery. But yeah, I'm happy a little bit for a short period of time, but it's not going to last very long because I'm not really feeling it inside. So now I have to change the decoration. You know, if I have more money, I'll be happy. If I move to Caribbean or south of France, I'll be happy. If I buy the Porsche, I'll be happy. If I have a lover, I'll be happy. So it's all projecting your happiness and love into future and another time to a conditional situation that has to happen but it only gives you the happiness and makes you happy for a very short period of time. And then the emptiness or that feeling of not being good enough or not being worthy enough comes back. And you're in the same place as you were before. So our can. We've been conditioned for looking for this outside of ourselves from day one. From the time we were born, we're doomed. And few people in this lifetime, they start to recognize that. They start to recognize that there is no one outside of yourself. But there is the one. The one you're looking for is within yourself. On a human scale, there is the love of the guru, of the master, of the... Um, sage and the disciple 
the guru and the disciple, they have their love affair. That's an unconditional love that happens between the master and the disciple. There's no conditions there. In human form. Outside of that, the one, the only real relationship that you have with your soulmate is the soulmate within yourself. And it's kind of, you have to recognize that. You have to come to that understanding. This is not like blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah, I found the one within myself. Oh yeah, then how come you're so needy? If you found the one within yourself, why are you so needy? No, you haven't. You have to dig deep to recognize that there is only one relationship. You're always in your life in a one relationship. And that's with the self. The self. Her majesty, the supreme, which is here residing within your own self. And that's your soulmate. That's the one that doesn't leave you. That's the one that's not going to leave you for a prettier, younger woman or guy. That's the one that is not going to leave you because you got old. Because you became disabled. Or because you're are boring, or whatever is the story, or your body doesn't look good anymore, or you don't have any money, you're broke now. That's your true soulmate. That's your twin flame. Anything outside of that, except the love of the guru and the disciple, that's not a conditional love affair, because the master is not expecting you to act or behave in a certain way. The master may kick you out and not want to hang out with you, but the love is there. So you can't just misbehave around the master and ex ex expect the master to keep you around. No, they may kick you out of the ashram, but the love does not change. Because if the master didn't love you, you wouldn't even be coming towards the master to begin with. You would have never found the master to begin with. But other than that, the one that we all have been looking for all of our lives, the real true soulmate, is within our own self. And we've been conditioned to look for it outside of ourselves. With all these movies and books and stories, fairy tales, songs and everything. And all you have to do is the proof is in the pudding. Just look at it. See if it's working or not. Tell me it's working, because I don't see that. It only works short term, that's it, for a period of time. Even if you're with someone for 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, finally, your partner will die and will leave you. And you're left out alone. At one point, one of the partners is going to go. 
it's the man or the woman maybe they both get in a car accident they both die together but in general even you've been with someone for 100 years finally one person is going to die it's not going to be there person is going to leave you but the true soulmate never leaves you is always there so this is a recognition this is like very important that i'm sharing it with you and you, you it's you got to pay attention to this you can't just hearing this and be dizzy and uh, going through the motions of life and come back to me three months from now and complain you got to pay attention to this because this is the gold this this is the diamonds you're receiving the diamonds that's going to save you a lot of heartbreak and and a lot of time of dizziness and walking around and banging your head against the wall and banging your head against the table and looking for love you know looking for love in all the places looking for love in all the places yeah and i'm not just pointing my finger at you we all i'm in the same boat you're not the only one we all have done it there's a part of us always wants to be accepted and loved. There's a part of us that wants that soulmate, wants, wants the companion. And it's very natural. That's a part of being a human being and a packed animal. We're not really designed to be a, <clears throat> like the monks being in, in, in the cave all of our lives. I mean, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to be in a cave alone by myself there are some people who do that but i don't want to do it and i don't want to be in a monastery because i love human connection i like the touch i like the skin i like the whole dance of romance and the love affair and da da da, da all of it but you have to understand that the true soulmate is not in a person that doesn't mean you're not pursuing someone that doesn't mean you're not in a relationship with someone that doesn't mean you don't stay in your marriage that doesn't mean you don't strive for having a partner that means you have awakened to the truth of the soulmate story. You have awakened to it. You woke up from this dream. What does awakening mean when we say awaken beings, enlightened beings? What does it mean? They have awakened from coma, from state of sleep, half asleep, right? which is basically majority of human race is in a half asleep. It's not really awake and it's not really asleep, but it's kind of like sleepwalking in between. That's its status. And that's why it suffers so much. And it's got all these ups and downs. And any Tom and Dick and Harry who, who is awakened to this truth and they're kind of on a vicious side, they get to screw you. They get to screw the public or the masses because they woke up and they're dealing with a bunch of sleepy people. So you can take advantage of them very easily. It's like you can take advantage of, of children very easily because they're naive and they don't know what's up so you can fool them very easily and that's what's happening right now 
It's been happening for thousands of years. You have to wake up. You have to wake up and recognize that. Wait a minute. It doesn't matter. I have this relationship, this man, that man, the other man, this marriage, this guy, that guy. And, it, you, know, it's, you know, it's good for a period of time, then it sours. It ends. And everyone around me is going through the same motion. Wake up and take a look around. Really pay attention. And you see the same thing happening all over. People loving each other, they're crazy about each other, they get married, you know, after the first child, the, the wife, angry, she's pissed off all the time. Well, because she's not sleeping. And then the guy is out there working all the time. You know, and then comes home and wants, they want to do it. He wants to have sex and she's tired and angry or whatever and is not giving it to him. And so they get separated. Then he just wants to go out with his buddies, drinking and going to strip bars. And she just pulls away more and dives into the kids. And they just drift away. They may stay together for 40 years. But they're going to start having their affairs here and there. This is the story. This is what ha is happening, you know. And, you know, and some people may get pissed off or get back to me and come back to me that, no, this is not how our relationship is. Well, I'm not talking about one couple relationship in specific. I'm just talking about what's going on around the world. And how much patience we have for our partners anyway. How long will we hang in there? Look at the divorce rates. <clears throat> or single, single parent rates. Like, okay, I don't want to have a partner. I want to have the kid, but I don't want to have a partner. So I don't have to deal with, with the dude or with, with the mom. So basically, this is it. The one is within yourself. Recognize that. This is the true love affair. Fall in love with the self. Again, now, don't make a mistake. I'm not talking about create and idolize your body. Not, you know, it's like, you know what? They say Jesus wa was walking to the mar marketplace and he went and started to uh, break all these statues of the gods, the Roman gods or, or whomever gods they were worshiping in the marketplace. And he started breaking all the statues. And, you know, when the idea of one God came versus the other cultures who were worshiping um, statues of whatever, whatever gods, whether the Greeks or whomever, they were worshiping the false gods. And somebody came and said, no, there's only one God. So they started destroying those statues. It's exactly what's also happening today is you can see it on Instagram. Go on Instagram and check out these kids and see how they are in love with their own body, which is it's good to take care of your own body and look good and be healthy and be in good shape and take care of yourself. But this is exactly identical to what was happening 2,000, 3,000 years ago. Worshipping the statues, and now we're worshiping the body. It's an object, worshiping it, trying to make it look better, trying to get 
bigger and I look like da 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 da. You know, my muscles are this big and you know, my neck is like this. And look at me, look at me. And taking 50 pictures a day of myself, putting it on Instagram. That's another worshiping of an object. You understand? I'm not saying, look, don't take me wrong. I'm not saying it's, you know, don't take some great pictures of yourself or short videos or put it on Instagram. I'm not saying don't do that. I'm, I'm using this as a metaphor so you understand it. It's, it's the same worshiping the false object. And what's going to happen to this body, to this beautiful gorgeous, sexy girl or guy, eventually is going to get old and decay, eventually. So if you put your attention on that and that's what you're going to fall in love with, eventually you're going to have to suffer greatly. You will suffer. But if the attention comes inwards and you discover the true self her majesty the supreme being her majesty lord god is here that's your soulmate and you fall in love with that you recognize that i'm not talking about being narcissist i'm talking about the recognition of the presence within yourself. And the love affair starts with God within yourself. That is one love affair that would never betray you. All the way to the point the last breath you take is there with you. That's the one. then you're free. In the meantime, you can have as many affairs as you want to have. And they're genuine, and you care about the person, and you may short-term fall in love with them, and which is okay. But you're not in an illusion. You're clear. Anybody has any comments, any questions? Feel free. Let's see. We've got a chat here. Stand. Okay. I still feel that way about my husband. I feel that the karma between us is that kept us together, but it doesn't mean it has to be forever. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. May I that too happens. Yes. Um, Go ahead. Um I'm about Hi. to be a new hello. I am about to be a new parent. And just going back to the beginning of what you said, do you have any suggestions as to how to teach a child discipline without programming with um, conditional love? <laughs> Not really, because I, I've never been a parent. So, okay. and, uh, so in a way, I'm not really qualified to, to teach parents um, how to deal with their kids because I've never gone through it. Okay, thank you. But re the recognition, realizing what we shared with each other, if that comes to your awareness and you're aware of that, then it will change things. I don't know how, but the recognizing that, okay, this is programming. Because in a way, to be honest with you, we all learn a form of prostitution from childhood, all of us. We learn how to prostitute ourselves by 
manipulating. We learned that from our parents because we did something good and they gave us the cookie and the chocolate. And then we learned to do the sweet things to, you know, I'm a little girl and I'm going to do all these sweet things. So daddy gives me the stuff. So it's kind of like manipulation and, and prostituting myself so I can get what I want. You understand that? Does it make sense? So, and, and it's not one or two people. We all have gone through this process and we're not aware of it. We're not aware that we're becoming master manipulators. And, uh, but they're also, our parents are, are, they have no idea. So it's, a, you know, it's, that's what happened to them. That's what everyone's seeing. That's how everybody's getting the feedback from all these songs and movies and everything. So I don't have no idea to have a different behavior. This is what I've only seen. So I'm going to respond to that. So once you become aware of that, maybe there's moments that you're in this relationship, all of a sudden you realize that, wait a minute. You know, and for conscious parents like you and your husband is somehow trying to teach our children from the beginning that real love is not an object. It's really here. So if we can teach our children to look inside look within, which is very, very opposite of Western culture, because it's all about objects and what's going on on social media. So maybe if we can influence them and kind of help them direct their attention inwards, then we can have an impact in their awakening. Any other questions, anyone? Any comments? Hey, Zarathustra. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, yeah, I, I, I completely understand what you're saying. Um, and I agree with everything. Um, I, in other words, the most important thing is to find the one within, because that's the one that is never going to betray you or never leave you. I totally understand that. Um, and it, and I, I've been trying to find that. Like, I don't know. It, it's, it's been difficult for me for some reason. Like I, I, I meditate a lot. I, I, during my meditation, I don't, I'm not like completely distracted with random, you know, meaningless random thoughts coming in my head. Um, I, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm usually very quiet and centered and I don't feel distraction but I haven't gotten to the point where I'm like, oh, I've found the one within, you know, like, I, like, as you refer to, as, as you refer to her majesty, I, I mean, I'm assuming once you find that it's completely obvious. Um, I don't know. I just, I, 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 I feel like I need guidance or I have to figure out how to, really connect with the one within you know like you're saying well when like, you're when okay uh casey i appreciate you brought this up so this is very good let's talk about this so you're sitting and you're in meditation and you go in and i'm sure there's been times you went into a very deep meditative state yeah yeah 
And when you go in a very deep medita meditative state, are you thinking during that time that I'm in a deep meditative state or you're just in this place that you're gone? Probably more so the second one you said. So you're just like in this really groovy place. It's like ecstasy or one with God. I'm throwing different words. And let's see which one you resonate with, okay? Okay. But you're in this place of really warmth, as if you're in, you know, you're being held in the bosoms of her majesty you know you're just you're just in this groove like all is well there's no problem you're just in this deep love or silence yeah yes no i mean i don't know what happened you have to tell me i don't know what happens yeah um like I feel like I'm kind of getting there but I don't feel like I've gotten there like I like during meditation sometimes I'll feel like okay like like I'll I'll feel relaxed I'll feel comfortable um but it's I don't know how to explain it. it it's it, I just I almost feel like I'm not like getting to where I want to be. You know what I mean? I don't so, know. It's so right. Hard to, put, okay. hard to put in words. Yeah, but okay, let me okay, let's put it this way. You're saying that you feel like you're not getting where you want to be. You just said that, right? Hello? Uh, sorry, my phone just rang and then yeah. I, I, I missed what you just said. I apologize. No problem. You say during the meditation, there are times that you feel that you're just not getting where you want to be. You just said that. I'm repeating what you said. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Right. So when that happens... How do you come to that conclusion? Is that a, it's in a form of a thought? You think about it? That I'm not getting where I want to be? How does that come to you? That message? How does it come yeah. to you? So you you think thought. of it, right? Yeah, it's the thought. And then also the feeling like I feel like I should be feeling more. Okay. You know, like I'm, like I'm relaxed, but... Like, I don't feel like I'm, like, fully connected to... Right. Know, right. What right. You, what stop, you... stop, stop right there. Stop right here. Okay. Okay. So either it's a thought or it's a feeling. It's either a thought or a feeling. Correct? Yeah. But no one comes and tells you this or gives you a piece of letter or sends you an email that tells you you're not getting there. Right. You're thinking it or you're feeling it. Yeah? Yes. All right. And who is observing those thoughts and the feelings? Who notices them? Only me. Okay. So there is, there is a me here aware of thoughts passing or emotions passing. But there is something here solid is aware of it. Something yeah. must not be changing that is aware of a thought coming and saying, I'm not really going deeper. And there's a feeling says, I don't feel like I went deep. To whom is this appearing?
turn your attention to that one and then you see you don't have any problem going deep in meditation. That's the one, that's the soulmate. Someone is witnessing these things. Right. And yeah, that one doesn't change. Where do you live? What state? Wisconsin. Does it snow there? Yeah. Okay. So, so how do you measure snow? Um, you, you can use a tape, right? Right. Let's, let's say it snowed two feet, right? Mm -hmm. So when you go and measure it, you measure it, you measure two feet of snow against what? How do you know it snowed two feet? Be because the ground is zero, right? right? Yep. We all agree that the ground surface is zero. Anything above it is plus. Anything below it is, let's say, minus. So we go five feet under the ground or we go five feet above the ground, correct? But the ground is zero. Do you agree on that? Yes. Okay. So something must be at zero point. So now if it snowed two feet or three feet, you measure from zero to three feet. So you say it snowed three feet of snow. The ground didn't go up and down. The snow went up and down. And then if you dig into the ground, the zero is still zero. So something in your life, within you, is never changing. That which doesn't change is the only thing that which is real. Anything else that changes is not real. Gotcha. Yeah. So your mind comes and says, Casey, you don't go deep. It's a thought. It's a trick. You have this feeling like, I'm not going deep. Deep against what? What is it that's witnessing it? That which is witnessing it is already there. It's in very, very, it's very deep. So if you just keep your attention over there, then you realize you're always in the very depth of yourself. And nothing needs to be done except recognizing it. So just stay there. Don't go anywhere and just stay in this place. Don't go into any stories. Don't look for anything. Don't try to change anything. No need to improve anything.
simply stay here. Thank you. You're welcome.
So whatever state you're in right now, if you're in this place that you feel it's silent, it's still. You, if you have come to this place, like, like it's quiet and it's really still and there's no mo story, there's no thoughts, there's no da-da-da-da. Then no, these are the moments you're encountering Her Majesty. These are the moments that you're with your beloved. This is the moment. that your soulmate is appearing to you your soulmate is showing herself himself to you this right now these moments that you go into this deep place meditative place that's it so it doesn't have to be Moses is at the edge of the ocean and opens up the ocean for the he Hebrew tribe to go through. It's very subtle. But it happens. It happens throughout the day because you're living in it. You're never separated from Her Majesty. It's like... We have two fish in the ocean, a bigger fish and a smaller fish. They're buddies. They're hanging out together. The small one tells the big one, says, you know, have you heard of this big ocean? This like gigantic thing with a lot of water in it. And the big one says, yeah, I know. I heard about it. And I've been looking for it all my life. And they're both in the ocean. So we're all there. You're breeding God. God is thinking through you. Every action you do, it's Consciousness is God. There's no way in the world that I can pick up this glass and drink if this is not the will of consciousness. It's the will of consciousness. It's the will of God. You are already that. You are who you're looking for. The one you're looking for Okay, the one you're looking for looking for it is right here. All you have to do is turn your attention inwards. And the noise is there, but the noise will disappear because you turn your attention inwards and then it becomes quiet. And it's still. That's what you're looking for. And the more you recognize it, it's always there. The more it appears and reveals itself. You're on the right track. Don't worry. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, you're welcome, my brother. You're <laughs> on the right, right track. And you, it won't let you go. It got you already. 
Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next week. We will have our academy, God willing, uh, next Wednesday, same time. And uh, this broadcast will be recorded. It's recorded. And, and those of you who sign up through the Zoom, we're going to send you a copy of it. You can also uh, go on my YouTube channel. And um, we have the whole one and a half, two hour episode. And then we also have it in 10 minutes. We, we cut out the meditation parts and we have like 10 minute, 10 minute chop, chop it, chopping it. So you can also, without the minute, you can watch that as well as um, the um, podcast. And all my uh, social media pages are Zarathustra 5D. My website is zarathustra.tv and my email is info at zarathustra.tv. So if you have any comments you want to communicate with me, you can send me an email. That's the best way to get my attention. <clears throat> if you have any suggestions for any topics for next week, feel free to write it to me. And... Um, and we'll see what happens. Sending you my love. And I look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you. Namaste.